Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. We're at the Yom Karon and Yom HaSmaud celebration hosted by Dor Kadash. Dor Kadash bridges the gap between Israelis and Americans, and each year they put on a spectacular event. Let's take a look. From the co-chairs of this year's event, Robin Polanski and Ofer Vilenko. Erev good evening. Along with the Dora Hadash team and our 116 partners and sponsors, Ofer and I welcome you to the 8th annual Yom HaZikaron and Yom Haatzmud event. We begin tonight with a ceremony for Israel's Memorial Day, perhaps the most emotional and meaningful day for our community. The evening will then transition into celebrating 62 years of victories, culture, and beauty that is Jewish independence in Israel. and the other 116 Jewish and Israeli nonprofits and corporations partnering together tonight, I want to thank you. To thank you for coming here. I thank you for your action, for your deliberate decision to come here and be together. I want to thank each and every one of you for making the decision to stop, to remember. You know, Yom HaTizikaron doesn't just happen in New York by itself. It only happens if people like you decide that it will. If people like you leave work early, cancel conference calls, miss classes, decline dinner engagements. In Israel, the country stops, and we stop with it. The sirens find us and halt us, even if we're speeding down the highway. They find us wherever we are. Here, we must find the sirens. Here, Yom HaZikaron doesn't come to us. And if we don't seek it out, and seek out other like-minded people, like the people in this room tonight, and congregate, it doesn't happen. Tonight, we stop to commemorate. We stop and acknowledge. To be there and actually in the smallest of ways feel what so many people of Israel have had to live with throughout these 62 years. We left City Hall after the rocket attack and we went to the kibbutz where the rocket had hit. And it hit in between, if that end of the stage was a house and this end of the stage was the health clinic, it hit right in the middle. And no one was hurt, thank God, but it was something that really should have, from my experience as a New Yorker, just stopped the whole community. But what happened, they got the backhoe, they dug up the rocket, the police took it, and then they went about their lives cleaning up the glass that had been blown out and made a mess in the health clinic. And then everyone went right back to living their lives, which to me was such a profound example of faith and belief in their vision of wanting to have their own home and their own sense of community. That no matter what these other people tried to do to them, no matter how hard people tried to shake the foundation of their country or the foundation of their faith, they were simply not going to let it happen. <laughs> Choose and not choose men and women. 
member of kibbutz, settlers, uh, you name it. They all fell, they all died, not because they wanted, they died for the state, the nation state of the Jewish people would be safe for all of us and that for all of us to continue with our lives. This is the hardest day for me to be outside of my country and I want to thank Lo Hadash for organizing this event, making it a little bit easier. This transition between uh, our memorial day, Yom HaZikaron, and our Independence Day, Yom HaZikaron, is very difficult. I don't think, I think it's probably makes this day the most Israeli day ever, from all the other days, but it's, I don't think any other country celebrates these two events in such a proximity. We are also here to honor and remember the victims of terror, whose world has been turned upside down and lives changed forever in an instant. Jack Thaxter was in Israel filming a documentary on Mike's place in Tel Aviv. On April 30th, 2003, his last night in Israel before he was to return to New York, Jack went to say goodbye to his friends at Mike's place. Jack was seated that evening right outside the front door next to the security guard talking with his friend Dominique when a British national detonated the explosive strap to him. 60 people were injured and three murdered, including Dominique, who was sitting on the stool right next to Jack. Jack spent the first three days in a coma and was released to outpatient services after two weeks. He spent a month in Israel recuperating and then returned to New York. Both his eardrums were blown from the impact of the blast. He was partially paralyzed on his left side, burned, bruised, and pieces of shrapnel and parts of the terrorist body embedded inside of him. Jack is lucky to be alive and with us today. Jack likes tonight in memory of his three friends, Dominic Haas, a French Israeli, Yanai Weiss, a husband and father of two young sons, and Ron Baran, a 24-year-old who had just finished his IDF service, as well as the thousands of victims of terrorism who are no longer here with us and those that survive the memories of their attack each and every day. Spectacular event. Happy birthday, Israel. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching. <laughs>